In Microsoft Copilot Studio, you can build a Copilot in a couple of minutes connected to your existing documents or your existing website. If you want to get started with this, just go to copilotstudio.microsoft.com hit this start free trial button. Everything I'm showing you in this video can be done without access to the Microsoft 365 full Copilot license. So if you're a small business, don't worry, this is still something that you can do. To get started, all you need to do is click here on new Copilot, give it a name. What I'm going to do here is create a Copilot that can help us navigate and find information in this style guide. I've just borrowed this one here from the Australian government. Lots and lots of depth of information in here. And I'm also going to bring in a PDF document, which is another style guide here with a lot of information to navigate. So we're going to give this one a name. We will call it style guide helper. You can choose your language. Obviously, I'm working in English here, but you do have some other options available. And then all we need to do is grab that website link, paste it in there and click create. Now, if you're doing this for the first time, it can take a little while to set up. It's usually not too long to wait. So while we're doing that, let me just explain what's going on here. I'm literally done creating my Copilot. It can be that simple. If you've got a website that is rich with this kind of information, you just point your Copilot to the website and it's going to apply the large language model to be able to find information and bring it back with the references in there. We can also publish that Copilot out into the systems that your users use. For now, I'm just going to show you what this looks like inside the test experience here. So I've got a test straight away. Nice greeting. Hello, I'm Style Guide Helper. So careful what name you choose because you're going to get it in there. So we're going to ask the chatbot, why is accessibility important? Now, I don't need to worry about spelling or capitalization or question marks or anything. And there we go. This is actually in real time. I haven't stopped this video at all. So we're up to not very much on the clock here. And I've got a live chatbot. Accessibility is important because all of these reasons here. And you can see with the footnotes, it's actually showing me where that is. So if I click on one of these footnotes, that will actually open the website where that information is coming from. Let's lift it up a notch here and bring in a document. So if you wanted to add additional websites or additional documents, all you need to do is go into this on the navigation menu here where it says generative AI. You'll see here you can add additional websites. You've also got the option to set the content moderation level. So this is the high level where it's going to focus more on accuracy. But if you wanted to dial that back to be more answers that are less precise, depending on the type of your content, you can tweak that setting there. So I'm going to come in here and just drag this document into there. You will see that it is only up to three meg. So if you've got something that's bigger than that, it's not going to handle it, but you can bring in up to a hundred documents here. And these are all of the different formats that you can work with. So you can see it's quite a wide range of formats. If you would like me to test some other examples and go further with this, pop some comments below of the kinds of things you'd like me to test or any use cases you've got. Happy to have some fun with this with you and, and try out your use cases. So for now, I've got this style guide in here. I've got it pointed to that website. File upload complete it will take a few minutes to do that. You'll notice here, just while we're waiting, files have been successfully uploaded to Dataverse. So it is using that Dataverse storage in the background, securely in your tenant. So you're not putting this information out to the public and you'll be able to do this. So with the magic of video editing, we're gonna give this a couple of minutes and come back and see what it's done. All right, that's only taken a couple of minutes. It's sitting in there. I do find, give it maybe five minutes or so, even though that message clears, as you work with the chatbot, it kind of won't work straight away. It does take a little bit of work in the background. So let's give this a spin now. Let's ask it something from this style guide. So we've got some information here about how to write numbers. Let's see what we can come up with here. So let's come back to the bot and ask it here. What are the guidelines for referring to academic titles? And we'll see what it comes back with this time. Look at this now. A whole lot of information in here about initial capitals, full titles, all good. This number one reference here, so if I click on that, that is actually still going back through to the Australian Government Style Manual. But you'll see we've also got Citation 2 in here. And when it's that PDF, it's bringing it up in the window. So it's actually combining both of those sources and bringing them in there together. 
Now this is all very well, we are in test conditions here. Let's just take a look at what's going on on the right hand side in the main panel here. This is a bot that has a trigger of unknown intent. So your co-pilot, you can actually build out topics. That's a whole other video where you can control exactly the flow of the conversation. But what I'm showing you here is just point directly at the content that you've already got, documents or websites. You don't have to decide on the trigger topics. The trigger is, I don't have a trigger, so I'm going to use this as my default. To use that large language model to create the generative answers, you can come back in here and add additional data sources or websites anytime you like, or over here in that generative AI tab, and you can see the conversation flow is gone, didn't know any particular trigger, used the clever large language model on the knowledge you gave me and came back and gave the answer very satisfactorily. So we don't want this to just sit in a test environment. We want to put it in the hands of the users. So what we need to do here is just click publish and you've got the option to publish this in different ways. Now I did promise you that everything I'm showing you here is something you can do without the Microsoft 365 Copilot license and you'll see I'm working in an environment here where I actually don't have that option. Oh, good, press publish while we're doing that while I'm talking. You'll see here publishing to Microsoft Copilot is turned off. That's because I don't actually have that license for the full Microsoft 365 Copilot. If you do have that license, you can publish this experience so that you've got that knowledge now as a part of that extended platform. But for those of you who don't have access to that or don't have access to that yet, do not worry, plenty more that you can still do here. So what we can do once it's published, we've got all that information in here, we can come into channels and these are all of the choices that you've got. So if you've got Copilot, you can do that, but otherwise, you can publish to Teams, you can publish it onto a website. So depending on whether you're creating the Copilot for internal or external use, you've got all these options. You can push it through into a mobile app. So again, another whole video there. Let's just have a look at what it looks like here on a demo website, because this is a quick and easy way to sort of show it to you outside of that experience. So we're gonna just copy that information there. We will grab a new browser window here and jump into that demo website. And here is my Copilot sitting on a website. What else shall we ask it about here? I've got some things on grammar and punctuations. Uh, let's ask it about apostrophes. <laughs> I am actually very big on correct grammar. Uh, give me some help with how to use apostrophes. That's a hard word to type while I'm talking at the same time. And there we go again with referring to both of those sources in that exact same experience. Don't forget to give this video a like if it has been helpful for you. Hit me up with any scenarios you'd like me to test more in the comments below and check out my playlist here for more things you can do with Microsoft Copilot Studio.